Thank you for joining us here today. Today we'll be talking about Be Smart, a program developed by Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America to bring together parents and all adults concerned about kids, guns, and safety. My name is Jill. We also have Robin, Cindy, and Barbara here today. I'm a mother of two girls, a nurse, and a Be Smart lead. Um, when I was growing up, the boy next door found his father's unsecured ammunition. He took a bullet and put it under the light bulb of his lamp, and he waited. The bullet ended up exploding. Um, luckily, he did not die that day. He did lose vision in one of his eyes. Hi, my name is Robin. Jill had already introduced me. I also met nurse, a retired emergency room nurse. I'm a mother of three and I have seven grandchildren. I'm currently the Pioneer Valley Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense lead, and I also work with Be Smart. So um, I think often as parents, grandparents, that we also we are off, often feel a lot of fear and feel helpless about how to keep our children safe. So tonight, we have a slide presentation for you, we'll have a question and answer period, and then we have some resource, resources for you. And when you leave, you will have some tools and some ways to start conversations to share with your community and other parents to try to help to keep all children safe. Firearms are the second leading cause of death for American children and the leading cause of death for black children. As this slide shows, 1,500 American children under the age of 18 are killed with guns every year, an average of four children every day. When children are killed with guns, the majority of those deaths, 53% are homicides. That's nearly 800 children every year. Additionally, 600 children die by firearm suicide each year in nearly a hundred are unintentionally shot and killed. We know that approximately 4.6 million United States children live in a household with at least one loaded, unlocked gun. And while school shootings and mass shootings typically make national headlines, the reality is that for children under the age of 13, homicides most frequently occur in the home. One study showed that nearly 90% of unintentional shooting deaths and injuries among children under the age of 15 occurred in the home. What's more, we know that in incidents of gunfire on school grounds that 78% of the shooters under the age of 18 obtain the gun or guns from their home or from the homes of friends or relatives. I know this is an emotional issue and we all come from different walks of life. Most of us are parents. Some are gun owners and some are not. And you may also have had a personal experience with a gun. And some of you may even have been impacted by gun violence. What we believe is that most gun owners want to be responsible ones. So we're here today to talk about what all of us, gun owners and non-gun owners alike, can do to make sure that children do not have unsupervised access to guns. For now, let's leave politics at the door and agree on these three things. One, we all want kids to grow up happy and healthy. Two, we each have the right to make responsible decisions on how to protect our homes, families, and communities, including whether or not to have a gun in the home. Three, if we can prevent even one child gun death or injury, it is our responsibility to do so. We're not here today to talk about laws or policies, so let's set those aside. I want to take a few minutes to talk specifically about what the consequences of unsecured guns looks like. On the slide above, I know it's a little hard to see, I apologize for that. On the slide above, you'll see just a few headlines from stories across the country, although we know that there are many incidents that go unreported. Some of you may even remember from the news the first story in the upper left. In January of 2018, there was a school shooting in Kentucky at Marshall County High School. At least 16 people were shot and wounded, and two of them, Bailey Holt and Preston Cope, were killed. 
The 16-year-old shooter had gained access to his stepfather's unsecured pistol from his bedroom. The next tragedy took place in May of 2018. A four-year-old boy from Louisa, Virginia, unintentionally shot his two-year-old brother Tyson. He found an unsecured gun that was kept high in an upper cabinet. And the next headline on the bottom left illustrates that when kids are looking to carry guns out of fear, easy access to guns can help facilitate the cycle of violence. 17-year-old Zeke of Jackson, Mississippi told the Jackson Free Press that some young people in his community carry guns out of fear of being robbed or shot. And they believe that having a gun will help them to defend themselves. And the last and final story is about 13-year-old Mikey from Brewster, New York. Mikey was a friendly and popular eighth grader. He was an expert bowler and he was an avid athlete. And he loved video games. In January of 2013, Mikey came home from school, took one of his father's unlocked, loaded guns, and he shot himself. His family knew him to be a happy child and they don't believe that he planned to die that day. But with easy access to a loaded gun, Mikey made an impulsive decision that tragically became a fatal one. All four of these stories show the fallout when young people get their hands on unsecured guns. And no story is quite the same, but they're all tragic and all these deaths were preventable. It's important to remember that even if you are practicing responsible storage or if you don't have a gun in your home, you can't be sure about other homes. You can't be sure how responsible other people are being. That's where our Be Smart program becomes helpful. What can we do? We can learn to be smart. We're gonna start with S. S stands for secure your guns in your homes and your vehicles. 13 million households with children contain at least one gun. And the majority of children in gun-owning households know where that gun is stored. And we already know that in the incidence of gunfire on school grounds that the majority of students under the age of 18 obtain the guns from their home or the homes of a relative or friend. Like the tragedy that unfolded at Marshall County High School in Kentucky that we talked about earlier. Guns should be stored locked and unloaded with the ammunition stored separately. Hiding a gun is not securing a gun. And we know that that can lead to tragedy. We talked about the four-year-old Virginia boy who unintentionally shot his two-year-old brother after accessing an unsecured gun that was stored high in an upper cabinet. And remember Zeke from Mississippi? He spoke of the complicated safety reasons that push some teens to want a gun. Keep in mind that kids feel a variety of emotions about guns. They are curious and they may have fascination or they may be fearful. As adults, it's our responsibility to prevent easy access to guns. Research also finds that responsible storage is associated with a decreased risk of firearm suicide and unintentional firearm injury among children. One study showed that households that locked both firearms and ammunition had a 78% lower risk of self-inflicted firearm injuries among children and teenagers, and an 85% lower risk of unintentional firearm injuries. Some commonly used responsible storage practices include using a cable, a lock, a lock box, or a firearm safe, as well as storing the firearms unloaded with the ammunition stored separately. Unsecured guns also contribute to a staggering amount of number of guns that are stolen each year. An estimated 380,000 guns are stolen from private gun owners every year, and gun owners were three times more likely to have a gun stolen if they've carried a firearm in the last month. Research also suggests that nearly one quarter of all stolen guns are stolen from cars. So storing a gun in a glove compartment or under a car seat is not considered responsible storage. M, model responsible behavior. Every law-abiding adult has a right to decide whether or not to have a gun in the home, but you can't count on curious kids not to find a gun. 
As we saw on this slide before, one study showed that the majority of children are aware of where their parents store their guns, and one third reported handling their parents' guns, many doing so without the knowledge of their parents. It is always an adult's responsibility to prevent unauthorized access to guns, not a curious child's responsibility. Talk to your kids about gun safety, but remember, that's a precaution, not a guarantee. One study found that young children who went through a week-long gun safety training were just as likely as children with no training to approach or play with a handgun when they found one. Modeling responsible behavior means smart adults make sure that kids don't have the opportunity to access guns. That said, you can't control the environment that your kid is in all the time. Help them, give them the tools to get out of a dangerous situation and to alert an adult. As an adult, it is your responsibility to do everything you can to prevent them from getting into a dangerous situation to begin with. We have a handout on best practices to talking to kids and teens about guns. The A in SMART. As I mentioned before, there are approximately 4.6 million children living in the United States in a household with at least one loaded, unlocked gun. That's why you need to ask about firearms in other homes that your children visit, and that's the A in SMART. For all of the parents and the caretakers in the room, what are some of the things that you ask about when your child goes to another person's house? You might ask about allergies, you might ask about a pool, you might ask about access to alcohol, and if there's teens involved, you might ask about who would be home. You might ask also about TV screen time and car seats. Asking about guns in the home should be as natural as asking about any other safety issues and it can seem very awkward at first. So try making it a part of your general safety conversation. And if you're uncomfortable with it, first try an email or a text. Give someone a time to respond to you. Let's talk about recognizing the role of guns in suicide. The R. Access to a gun can mean the difference between life and death. We saw that in Mikey's story. As your children get older, you may need to consider taking another lo look at your storage methods. If you've been using a simple cable lock, you may want to think about getting a gun safe. We all know how curious children can be, so as they get older and more resourceful, we may need to act accordingly. Also, if you know your loved one is in distress, you may want to consider temporarily removing the gun from your home. Take this information into consideration. Most people who attempt suicide do not die unless they use a gun. In fact, 85% of suicide attempts with a gun results in a death. A much higher fatality than any other means of self-harm. This contributes to the fact that 40% of child suicides involve a gun. If you consider temporarily removing a gun from your home, how can you do that? Local law enforcement may be willing to temporarily store your guns. Some licensed gun dealers or gun rangers, rangers may be willing to temporarily store your guns. The National Youth survey conducted by the CDC showed that 17% of high school students surveyed had seriously considered attempting suicide within the last year. One study showed that 41% of adolescents in gun-owning homes reported having easy access to guns. Research shows that responsible storage is associated with decreased risk of child firearm suicide. We have handout materials with more information about how to get help and to recognize warning signs, and it includes the suicide prevention hotline. We need you to tell other people about the Be Smart acronym. It, the T stands for tell. And so we've heard that people that, because of the Be Smart training, to ask about the presence of guns before your child goes to another person's home. 
That, that's the big takeaway from this, you guys, is asking other parents. I'm gonna come off script for a second here. Um, when my kids were younger, um, you know, I taught, we taught my kids, my, my husband's a hunter, there's guns in our house. I never thought my children would ever touch a gun. They're all grown up now. And they have children of their own. But I got a call from my girlfriend one day and she said, you need to go over and pick up the boys. I just walked in the bedroom and her two boys and my two boys had gotten the key and they had unlocked the gun that was up in the closet and they were playing with it when she came in. We were lucky, nobody got hurt. Um, I'm not sure where the ammunition was at that time. But I, you know, that was 40 years, well, 30 years ago. And I never would have believed that my child would have done that. And I never would have thought to ask about guns in a home. But it's very, that's the biggest thing is for you to ask if your child's going to somebody's house, is there a gun there? Is it safely stored? And if it's not, then you might want to consider other things. Um, and it's hard to talk about it. The minute you bring up the word gun, everybody's really uptight about it. All you're talking about is your child's safety. You're not trying to make a judgment call here, but you're the only person that can protect your child. So the T um, in SMART, is the mo I feel, is the most important. So after people have come to this training, what we're ho hoping, or this presentation, is that you'll go out and you'll start to talk to community members, you'll talk to other parents, and you'll get the conversation so it's easy when you can say, oh, do you have any peanuts at your house? My son's allergic. And by the way, do you own a gun? And is it safely secured? Research also shows that um, people in the military and people that hunt and people that are in outdoor groups are particularly effective at, effect at communicating safe gun storage practices. And so those are the people that we kind of need on our side, the people that know and handle guns. <clears throat> to review again the Be Smart acronym, acronym, S, secure guns in homes and vehicles. M, model responsible behavior. A, ask about firearms in other homes. R, recognize the role of guns in suicide. T, tell your peers to be smart. So I. I want to thank you for coming today. I mean, I know you had an incident at this school, and that's why your superintendent and your principal like got in touch with us right away. Um, I was glad that they knew about us. Um, this is only one piece, but it's the piece that empowers you, and it gets a conversation going. So if you have any questions about the presentation, I can tell you that in Massachusetts, in Massachusetts, the gun laws say that your guns have to be stored, locked, and secured. Um, and un unaccessible. No, other states don't have those lo those laws as strong. And I think, as you probably found out, that if someone does access a gun, that law enforcement can step in and charges can be filed. But that's, you know, the best thing is is that no one got hurt in what happened here. Um, I also do want to tell you that um, Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense. We do meet. Um, in Holyoke, we have other things that we talk about, the extremist protection law, which is new in Massachusetts. Um, it's about a year old, and that's the law that helps to uh, remove guns from situations temporarily where people are at risk. Um, I worked in the emergency room for 29 years, and I can't tell you the amount of times that people would come in and say, my dad's really depressed, he's been drinking, there's a gun in the house, what can, what can we do? And you know, until he makes an actual threat, it couldn't be removed, but now there's a mechanism for that. Um, a lot of times people were afraid to get the police involved because they were afraid that the person would lose their FID forever or they wouldn't be able to um, get their guns back. But there's a, um, a way to deal with that now. So our next meeting date for Moms Demand Action, if anybody's interested, is Holyoke Public Library. It's January 8th, Wednesday at 6.30. Um, goes till about 8 o'clock. I really want to thank you for your concern and I hope that some of this was helpful and I hope that this starts a conversation all through your school. Any questions? What was the date for the meeting? January 8th. Um, so there's some law enforcement people here too though, so if there's any questions, this might be a good time to use them or us or... Do you guys have anything to add? Like you were saying, uh, the guns are out there. Um, they had a, a, a bring your gun back over the weekend, was it? Yeah. 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 You have four in Springfield? Yeah. Yeah. In Springfield, and I think they had like 150 guns. So people bring them back. You know, um, if you have them in your family, and you know, members of your family pass away, and it's still under your care, like you said, you call the police department and we can get rid of them for you, or, or tell you, 
impact a lot. A lot of people are different, um, but that's the way I was. Um, so parents would ask me back then. They would ask me. Oh, yeah, they would ask me. They know more on the they would, they would know, well, they know on the police officer. Right. So they would ask. They'd say, hey, you keep your mind on this. Conversation starter or the how to ask people, um, but I I think I I uh, I get anxious when somebody says yes I have a gun at, in my house or we have six guns or ten guns or three guns um, and they're but they're secured and how do I know they're secured and I wanted to know if you knew the statistics on how many homes where they were reported to be secured but there still ends up being an accident. I don't have statistics on that, but I think as a parent, I would say, can you tell me what you mean by secured? Because secured would be locked and the key unaccessible the and the else. ammunition someplace else. Some people, that's why it's important, like secured is not up above the refrigerator in the cabinet. And secured is not under the bed. Well, I think the way the law in the Massachusetts, I could be wrong about this, but it's on your person, that's considered secure. That's considered Yeah. You have it on your person. But the bullets can be in it. Yes. Can be. Do you have a license? We have the ID handout that talks about what we talked about today. And on the back, there's some information about securing guns appropriately. We have it in English and Spanish. If you want to pick it up on your way out. I, I also wanted to add, um, my husband is a police officer with, with these guys in polio, and when my kids were coming up, parents, new parents asked me all the time, um, hi, oh, you know, Tessa's coming over to play with Mary today, my husband and I are really, I'm sorry to ask, but how do you secure your gun? And I, exactly, I was never offended, and it, it makes us feel more comfortable that you're concerned about things like that too. So my, I'm happy now my kid's gonna go to your house. So don't be afraid to ask that. And a, um, I should say, a, a gun owner who is um, making sure their, their things are secure is never gonna be offended. But every time my kids ran into a new friend on the basketball team or on the football team, um, parents would always ask us how we secured our gun and where it was. And, and just like Joe, I don't think my kids knew that he carried a gun until they were like 13. Because it was always hidden. Uh, you know, over a coat, or he would get dressed in his uniform somewhere else. Uh, it was not part of their daily life. On the table outside where the trifolds are, there is a piece of paper that has some sample conversations that you can either do in person or text, please. Um, pick one of those up. I apologize, we don't have it in Spanish. Um. You said you have a meeting coming up in January yes. uh, at the Holyoke Public Library. Mm -hmm. so, are, so when you come together at these meetings, are you planning other um, events like this? Is that uh, your main role? So the Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America was started by um, a woman after the Sandy Hook shooting. She, her child was not um, shot at Sandy Hook. And it grew into a movement of mothers and other people that are interested in demanding action for gun sense in America. So that part of us, we work on legislative actions. We're um, recommending three bills that are standing there right now in Massachusetts. Um, one of them is about live firearm training. We do a lot of legislative work. We also um, recognize and work um, with where every town and Moms Demand Action and Where Orange has now come under one umbrella. So every town was started by Mayor Bloomberg, running for um, president, and that was Mayor's <coughs> Against Guns, and um, they also work on legislative action. But we have two parts in Moms Demand Action that are totally apolitical. And one of them is the Be Smart presentation because it's about gun safety and we just want to get that. Keeping kids safe. Keeping kids safe. And the other thing is we do a presentation on um, the extreme risk protection law, which is that law we talked about where you can have the guns temporarily removed from the house. Um, and so we, we work towards those kind of things. We're also getting involved um, 
in city gun violence. We're starting to become a presence in Springfield. We've been uh, working with the Campaign for Nonviolence. We've met with ROCA, trying to find our way to how we can assist them in all the actions that they're doing to try to make their um, city safer. The, the group that's meeting on the 8th, is, does that cover a certain, um, is it like spring, the greater Springfield area Pioneer or Pioneer is it? Pioneer Valley. Valley. People come, come. Pioneer Valley. Yeah. Valley. Please yeah. come. Yeah, we're yeah. actually from, I'm from Leiden right before Vermont, but we come down to Holyoke and there's quite a few um, barbers from Long Island. Yeah. Yeah. Greenfield. So. Thanks for coming all this way. Yeah. No, we really, um, we're th thrilled to get the word out. What people can do is take a snapshot with their smartphone, if they have one, of um, the information that we give you so that if you are nervous about having the conversation with other people about asking about guns, you can send them a copy and say, this is something I went to. Um, and then that could be a great introduction and you can, a way of asking and telling, spreading the word. I totally support all that we're talking about here and the conversation that we're having and I'm super supportive of that. My concern is talking to people that, I mean, there's people that can't be here and that's all, I get that, but the people that are unwilling to have these conversations, that's where, like, where's the prompt with that? How can I do that in a way that's not invasive on them, but to be honest, I don't really care about their feelings when it comes to my child. So I don't wanna, but I also don't wanna present like that to them, you know, that's sort of where I'm at. Well, I think, um, you know, you're unfortunately in the unique opportunity that you had an incident here. So that's kind of an opener to people where you could say, there was recently an incident at the school. It's made me really concerned about what, whether or not, where my child's going and whether or not there's guns there. And you are right. There are people that are defensive about that. And they'll, they might move into a Second Amendment talk or whatever. But I would just keep going back to, I'm concerned about my child's safety. That doesn't mean your child can't play with that child but maybe you'll want to change the play date to your house. You know, if there was any question in my, to be honest, if there was any question in my mind, if I th thought somebody was not being truthful, I would say, you know, why don't you have um, James come over to my house and play? And, um, and just, and you can, you know, obviously if somebody's very angry, then you would just maybe want to, maybe that's not where you want your child to play. Can I, can I also, I think you make a very good point and, uh, you know, we, we wanted to respond uh, just immediately, as quick as possible to this incident, but a lot of the people that are here tonight are um, parents who are active, very active, they're uh, folks that wanted this information. Um, I feel like as a school district, we need to try to be more aggressive in reaching out to families across the district and getting into events that maybe it isn't the, 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 it isn't the topic, but we the, the, the focus, but there are other events where we get a lot of parents into the school. So how can we partner with Be Smart to be present in other places? We do want to in January and February offer this session, but I don't know that we'll get always the people that need to hear it at the, at the meetings. I think we are going to have to go to events where we know there are going to be a lot of parents there, uh, like, a, you know, performances, we get tons of parents. Um, and so, um, you know, that, I think that's on us to, to work on that, and I, I've, I've been very impressed with how responsive, be smart, is and willing to help us do that, uh, because I think we, this is not just about Ian White. This is a citywide issue, and this is something that I, you know, I, uh, I have significant, I have concerns about it for families and children across this city. Um, so it's not, you know, we don't necessarily have to give a presentation, we're happy to, to just have a table That's at right. an event where other things are going on oh. and have people come by and ask us the questions and take some of the literature. And uh, that's what the power of tea is. So, you know, people telling other people that it's not political, it's not about taking away your guns, it's about keeping our kids safe. So, we have different ways that we address it depending on what the venue is. It's great, you know, we love giving presentations, but it doesn't have to be a presentation. It can just be, you know, having a table where people will come by. I just wanted to respond to what sure. you had said. Sure. Um, because as a parent and um, just working in public health for a long time, I 
think that what you're saying makes a lot of sense. And I think it's a really good idea. But one of the main things I think about, like why I think it's such a good idea, is because having it, for example, at the winter concerts or a table at the fire station, trick or treat yeah. thing, or yeah. something like that, little things constantly normalizes the conversation. Yes. And it reminds all of us, and then we can hold each other accountable in the community. And I think having any community events as well as school events sort of gives the all the city of the wall for you. So we make a great point. Um, and I, you know, I, so I look forward to having that follow-up conversation with you about that uh, great thing. Do you have a question? I'm wondering if either Be Smart or our law enforcement officials have um, flyers and handouts to talk about what secure storage is and what the like what the repercussions are for unsafe storage, whether that's in the form of statistics or um, penalties. Um, and I'm glad that we're going to be having like more explicit conversations in the classroom with our students about what to do if they encounter a gun. Um, but I do think that we should, uh, you know, get that information out to parents more. So because I think that there there are often um, like uh, innocent mistakes made out of ignorance, and people don't understand what secure storage is, and there may be different notions of secure storage. I mean, different. It's different state by state to begin with. So if we could have some sort of resource to hand out um, through the students to the parents, so that it's just disseminating the information more directly. Um, I think that would be sure, really beneficial. But I think you hit it right on the nose because uh, as she was saying before, when you ask if they have guns and ask them how they secure it, I think that's very important to ask how they secure it because I, I know through the Hoyle Police Department, I'm not talking about the incident that happened here, but a lot of other incidents that I dealt with, every single person said my gun was secure, and it wasn't. But they all said it was secure. It so, so I think they think differently of how you secure it. So I think it's important that you ask how you secure it. In Massachusetts, just so you know, I mean, we have really almost if not the strongest, the second strongest gun laws in the nation. And we have, well, we did have statistically the least amount of gun deaths, but um, we are surrounded by states that do not have strong laws. And there's a lot of illegal guns coming, as you well know, into Holy Open Spring. Sure. Um, so I, my husband works in the That's an excellent way, to, though, to even ask. You can say, my husband's a Marine, we keep a gun, it's secured safely according to Massachusetts general law or whatever. And then you can say, so I'm just checking, you know. I mean, that's a great way because you've already put it out there. You've already exposed yourself and you feel comfortable doing it, so, and talking about it. Actually, uh, Michelle and I that. Uh, my wife, when we first got together, she was an officer in the And of course, when the play dates start coming, we tell the parents right off, just so you know, both police officers, there are firearms in the house, we know they're secured as a properly secure, and no parent ever had a problem with it. They're like, no, we understand completely, and we never had any issue. Uh, nobody stormed away, nobody wouldn't let their child over, uh, but we were very forthright. If there was a new child coming over, a new parent, we'd always go, come on in, have a little quick sit down, and let them know. We're both police officers, okay. there are weapons in the house. Did anyone ever ask to see how you're storing No. And we would have shown up, we would have started whatsoever. Can I just ask you guys too? I mean, if you can think of any place that is a good place for us to present, if you think that, hopefully, you think this information is useful, you know, please feel free to be in touch with us because, you know, we'll go anywhere. I'd like, I was going to say, you know, I'll, call, I'll talk to any case and see if we get you for a backpack. Uh, yeah. backpack giveaway. That's huge. Yeah. And I just emailed you about our, um, our winter student showcase, which is January 28th, and we get a huge, I think every parent and grandparent in my building goes, and if there was a table 
you know, right at the front doors, I know a lot of people would pick up that information. That's awesome. Jackie, what about, um, like, um, sporting events um, for the schools, like, you know, the local basketball? Well, we, we now do our, so our middle school sports program now is, um, the games are at the Boys and Girls Club, which gets a huge, huge turnout as the different schools play one another. That would be a great spot. And the Boys and Girls Club says people in and out all night long. <laughs> but I also think um, at Hoyo High. Yeah, so my yeah. kids are at Hoyo High yeah. at the football games and the basketball yeah. games yeah, that are well see. attended. Yeah. And we know, that, you know, there's always been rumblings about issues there. I, I think having them at the early games when it's not yeah. freezing, yeah. Um, yeah. having a table I, there. I, I said to Robin, the St. Patty's Day Parade. You know, is there a, a, an area where we might be able to set up or in, even walk in the parade? Just fill us with some suggestions of how you <coughs> think we could be exposed to help out. Well, 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 to, to what Steve said, it can't all just be here because we had an incident. I mean, three years ago, it was inside Morgan School where that guy tried to break in because he was being shot at through the window. Right? So it's got to be at every school. Right. I don't know if you guys saw that YouTube video that a couple kids at Holyoke High made yes. about the not shopping violence. A couple years ago, yeah. Yeah, that was an awesome video. But so there's kids in high school who have NPS yeah. who want to stop violence, and so why not start training some of these kids to become the trainers? Yeah, and then it would be peer pressure, socialization, normalization, things there like that. There is a subgroup of yeah. students demand action that we don't have. Our group, but they're welcome to come to our meeting and spread the word. So if they're really so, you guys all need to go out and tell about us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> if you if you ask us, you know, you only need one of us to be at a table. You know, you only need one of us there. Yeah. We can yeah. get all the information. It's little steps, just um. little steps, and it grows, and it's communication. You guys are awesome. This is a beautiful school, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Are you guys on social media? Um, be smart. You can actually go to Be Smart. There's an actual website, um, and there's a. We actually had a video, but we couldn't get sound. Um, we We're to, learning. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's actual. Yeah. Be, if you go to Be Smart for Kids, there's an actual website that has all the resources and um, some videos and um, some of the handouts that we have. You can actually print also. I think we, we pretty much covered. Yeah. Right. The video is another good thing to share to tell. Yeah. Just send a link to the video, and it's a yeah, great way to tell good. others. Because people love to pull up their phones and, and watch videos. <laughs> Moms Demand Action Pioneer Valley, we do have a Facebook page, and Moms Demand Action has a Facebook page, Massachusetts, so you can look that up. But. I will just also share that uh, we are working with the Sandy Hook Promise they're folks, awesome. and they're coming to uh, work with every 6th through 12th grader in the whole of public school. January 13th, 14th, and 15th. They're going to go to every school, and they have a 45 minutes to an hour presentation around. A lot of it's like uh, around uh, seeing signs of students who are, you know, struggling with mental health. Um, but it really is a response to, you know, obviously what happened in Sandy Hook. Uh, and so they will be working with every one of our sixth and twelfth graders um, in the system. And so, you know, we're excited about that. Some of the, I mean, I obviously don't. Uh, the, not a rosy topic, but an important one for our older students to, to hear. They, that, um, and they, each school um, is required to then start a club that is focused on um, see something, say something. Um, not exactly tied to this, but, but it, it's also about ways that we're using our students to, to, to uh, keep each other safe. Um, and so um, you'll see more information about that if you have older students uh, in the system. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.